What's up my friends? I'm Harv, I'm a videographer and on this channel I make videos about videography. In this video I'm checking out the brand spanking new version of the OC T5 on camera monitor. They're calling the T5 Plus. Let's get into it. I'm going to go over the features you get, the build quality, the value for money, the image quality, lots more. Let's do it. I now have a non-profit Patreon for this channel, the idea being that any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel and then I, I buy gear, I review it, and then I give the gear away to my backers. It's inexpensive to be a backer, just the cost of a cup of coffee. So if this video helps you and you're into gear giveaways, then do check it out. Everything is linked in the description box below. So I never bought the original OCT5, but if it had the features that the new T5 Plus has, I definitely would have. Let's get into it. What is it? The OC T5 Plus is a five and a half inch on-camera display and it's seen a huge jump in brightness because it's 1000 nits. This is a massive improvement from the original T5's borderline unacceptable 450 nits. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, 1000 nits is around the same as you get on the new iPhone, new at the time of filming, iPhone 14 Pro. So pretty bright. It's HD, 1080p, which is very standard for this kind of display. It gives us really good pixel density of 400 pixels per inch, which is not smartphone good, but it will give a really detailed image. And again, for perspective, the iPhone 14 Pro it gives you 460 ppi, so really pretty close. In the box, you get a quick start guide, which I doubt most of you will need because it's not tricky to get started. Of course, you get a tilt arm with a shoe mount to mount it on top of your camera, but more of this in my section about build quality. This comes with HDMI cables, to which I thought, great, but hang on a minute. They're just these smaller HDMI types. And of course, all newer Sony cameras have full-sized HDMIs. Whilst I appreciate these are included, they are kind of useless to me. You get a sun hood, which suggests that for shooting in bright sunlight, the T5 Plus is not going to be quite up to the task without the hood. And then we have the T5 Plus itself, which feels good in the hands. And something that struck me straight away is that it's shockingly light. The bulk of the weight will be from the battery. Of course, it uses the NPF style battery, which was the correct choice of battery from OC. They're so common and inexpensive. You operate it with the same toggle button that you'll find from the previous T5 and larger T7. The image looks just great. The new display that OC have chosen is beautiful with lovely contrast, pretty accurate color and very detailed. There's really not much I can add to that. You'll love the image, I'm sure. Uh, there's a touch of latency, but honestly, no more than any other monitor I've used. And I've used, you know, Atomos and Small HD, the higher end brands. In terms of features and tools, I can't think of a single one that you see in these kind of monitors that this doesn't have. We're talking aspect ratios, safe zones, anamorphic D-squeeze, false color, zebras, waveforms, vector scope, histogram, focus assist, peaking, audio meter, plus a multi-scope mode. On the lookup table side of things, you can load 10 of your favorite LUTs to use, or the T5 Plus has a D-Log tool, which will do a basic conversion of your log footage. I found it a little weird that I had to go into the system settings to actually configure the D-Log, and I would have thought it would be easier to do it from within each set, because that's how it's kind of been done on previous OC products. So, um, but it, you know, it works. On to build quality and OC have opted to go for the same plasticky chassis material as the original T5. It's fine, but it's still just okay plastic. I kind of feel like a lightweight aluminium for the chassis material would have been just so nice. It would have given it sort of just more premium feel and taken it to the next level. And I get that this kind of thing adds cost, but I see this as a, as a kind of a missed opportunity. The arm that you get to mount it to your camera feels pretty sturdy. I think it's aluminium with a few plastic bits. It sort of slots into the hot shoe nicely and feels sturdy, it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall off. The sun hood that you get with it is just a very simple plastic, lightweight piece of plastic with these hoops so that you can attach it. And that's kind of just perfect, simple and just lightweight. When it comes to user experience and user interface, I found the T5 Plus to be very familiar and almost sort of comforting because I've been using OC products for years now. So very natural for me. 
It's definitely not perfect, I'll say that, and here's why. Firstly, the tilt arm. It works pretty well, it rotates so that you can easily switch from front to rear facing, but I was never able to tighten it so there would be more resistance. Also, and this is a really nitpicky thing, it always seems to sit slightly wonky, like not quite in line with the lines of your camera. And if you're an OCD kind of guy, that might bug you. The Sun Hood, whilst I like that it's a lightweight and simple design, has a small flaw, and that's that you have to remove the monitor from the arm and detach any cables to be able to put the hood on. The menu systems work pretty well, but that's not surprising for me to think that because, uh, you know, because of the familiarity aspect. I remember when I first got an OC product, it was the original OC T7. I remember thinking that the, they weren't the most intuitive, but OC are constantly improving this kind of thing with firmware updates and this latest T5 Plus has their new Mon OS system, they're calling it. You get up to eight custom presets, OC calls them sets, where you can have different tool layouts. For me, I've only ever needed to use one set, but I can see how you know, for some people this might be useful to have more than one if you've got more than one camera rig that you use the monitor with and that kind of thing. One awesome thing that this monitor has is the ability to choose how your exposure tools meter either before your lookup table, i.e. giving you the log exposure, or after you've applied a lookup table. And you can choose this in the settings where it says probe location. It also has a proper battery indicator. Sure, it's not a percentage, which I would have preferred, but it's not showing some bizarre voltage reading, which, you know, Nope. Who understands that? So far my biggest user experience niggle would be this little button, which I kind of didn't love on the original T7. Um, this one feels just not, not the best, it feels a little sticky and you can almost kind of hear that it's making a noise. It's, a, it's just not um, as responsive as I'd like. Don't get me wrong, it's not horrendous, it doesn't stop me from using it, but Really, this just highlights how much better a touchscreen would have been for this unit. Next, looking at the value of the T5 Plus and any kind of alternatives. And for me, I, I sort of see value as OC's trump card and I've just relied on them for so long and I just think they deliver so much value for money and the T5 Plus is no exception. For anyone just getting into video, I would say this is potentially the best bang for your buck monitor right now. In fact, I have already recommended it to a few friends. So, I mean, that I guess speaks volumes. Of course, there are too many alternatives to mention. The brand leaders like Small HD and Atomos may have the edge when it comes to build quality and in Atomos' case, a focus on monitors with built-in recorders. But I'll say it again, OC do value like no other. So with that bold statement in mind, why would you go for the T5 Plus instead of their slightly larger T7? Well, firstly, I think price. You know, the T5 Plus is cheaper and it is, they are aiming for the, um, the more budget end of the market. And if this is your first monitor, then this, you know, budget is going to be a consideration. Secondly, the T5 Plus is smaller and lighter. For compact setups or gimbal rigs, this is really important. Thirdly, the T5 Plus is going to give you better battery life. It's a smaller screen, which means you can scale down the batteries that you use and reduce the size and weight even further. Lastly, the T5 Plus has a higher pixel density than the T7. They're both 1080p, so the T5 Plus packs the pixels into a smaller display. The T5 Plus has 400 ppi and the T7 has 314 ppi, so a significant difference. Finally, let's go through the pros and cons and we'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So into the pros and this has great brightness at 1000 nits. I rarely have the backlight at full power, often I'll dial it back because often it's just too bright. This is a superbly detailed screen and I really like it. I've been super happy with the color so far Really, no complaints. I've had some monitors in the past where I haven't enjoyed that side of it so much, but this one, it's good. This is a feature-packed little product. Like I said earlier in the video, I can't think of a single exposure or focus tool that this is missing. You've gotta love the small size and weight of this monitor. I love this for using it as part of a really compact rig, especially when going traveling and shooting video. How can you fault the value? This is so much monitor for your money. Obviously, I can't comment about the price in this video because it's ever-changing, but do check. There are links in the description box below. I've gotta give OC some credit. They did 
include HDMI cables, albeit not the type I need. Onto the cons, and the biggie for me is that this is not a touchscreen display. I feel like this could have been a missed opportunity for OC. Touchscreen is the future. And following on from that one, the little button toggle that you use, I don't love it for operating the unit. Often I'll be using it and not thinking, and I'll tap the screen and expect something to happen. Whilst the build quality is okay, I've got to give it a bit of a knock because I really would have liked to have seen something like aluminium used. I also would have loved to have seen the full size HDMI cable included, but never mind. Getting the hood on requires dismantling the monitor, which is just a bit annoying. It might sort of interrupt your workflow a bit. I also can't help but feel like the arm that you use could be a little better. I would personally recommend using an aftermarket mount. This can potentially keep things even more compact. And not long ago, I did a shootout of lots of different monitor mounts, and that'll be linked. There's no wireless connectivity, and this isn't a huge deal, but I mention it because it's nearly 2023. Some monitors already have this function, and I believe it's the way things are going. So maybe for the next version? Finally, to my opinion, and I don't want the cons that I just mentioned to put you off buying this, because they shouldn't. It's a really good monitor. If you need a smaller, lighter rig, maybe for travel or using on a gimbal, the T5 Plus is an excellent option. The two fundamentals of being a good monitor, in my opinion anyway, are nailed. Having a great image and tons of tools. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. And of course, I want to hear from you. I have a question of the day. What one feature would you like to see become standard on these types of monitors in future? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments section below. I've made hundreds of videos about audio and video on this channel, of which YouTube has selected this video for you to watch next, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.